Ezekiel chapter 17. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle, and it's a mystery, and speak a parable. It's a representation of something that's real. Unto the house of Israel. Okay, so this is for Israel. You know, in the Bible, it's it's for Israel. It's for the church. It's for Gentiles. Or it could be for the world. you got to rightly divide. And say, thus saith the Lord God. Okay, we got two eagles. A great eagle, this would be Nebuchadnezzar. With great wings. Long-winged, full of feathers, which had diverse colors, and diverse colors and full of... Nebuchadnezzar is surrounded up with nations. Came into Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. And that, that would be King Jehoiakim, king of Judah. And cropped off the top of his young twigs. And carried it in the land of traffic. And I'm one of those young twigs would be Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. Land of traffic is Babylon. He said it in a city of merchants. He also took the seed of the land. And planted it a fruitful field. He placed it by the great waters. And set it as a willow tree. And this would be Zedekiah. Zedekiah was set by Nebuchadnezzar. And it grew. And became a spreading vine. That vine's important. Of low stature. Low stature is. Israel is a nation. But they're under King Nebuchadnezzar, who will come into the land three times, and the third time he'll destroy. And it's funny because in the Gospel of John, the Jews tell Jesus, well, you know, we're not under bondage. Well, why did you bring Jesus to Pilate? Why didn't you just stone him? Because you were under the Roman government and the Bible said that Jesus, not a bone of him, was to be broken. You are under the realm of Nebuchadnezzar. You've been, they, Israel has been under bondage. What about Egypt? So, Israel is a nation under Zedekiah, under the nation of Babylon whose branches turned toward him, and the roots thereof were under him. So it became a vine. A vine is Israel. And brought forth branches, and shot forth sprigs. And there appeared another great eagle. This would be the king of Egypt, Pharaoh. With great ring, wings, excuse me, so they both, we have here, they're both great eagles. They both have great wings. Nebuchadnezzar is long-winged, full of feathers. Egypt has many feathers. And behold, the, this vine, taken from the previous verse, Zedekiah, did bend her roots, Israel, toward him. So under the realm of Babylon, Zedekiah and Israel run to Egypt for help. And God says, don't you do that. The law forbade Israel running to Egypt. Zedekiah and Israel does that under Babylon. And under the preaching of Jeremiah... <laughs> Jeremiah says, listen, obey Nebuchadnezzar, obey Babylon, and it will be well with you, and now you're in trouble. And you're going to get in worse trouble. 
and shot far for branches toward him, king of Egypt, that he might water it with the furrows. That's how they watered the, the, the land of the Nile of Egypt. They had furrows and they would release the water into those furrows of her plantation. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Plantation is a four letter word today. Can't say plantation. Oh, the violation of the slaves in America. Yet the King James 1611 Bible says plantation and is talking about Egypt who had Israel in bondage and slavery. So you want to talk about slavery in America, let's talk about slavery in the book of Exodus and plantation in Africa. Okay? You want to throw, oh, we got to take down statues and we got to erase the, the, the black heritage of, of slavery in America. Okay, let's go to the Bible. Let's go what you did to God's people because you will stand against God for whoever curses Israel shall be cursed. Okay? You don't ever mention about the slavery of, of Israel in Egypt, do you? And in America today, oh, we owe the black people, we owe the black people, we got to apologize. <laughs> okay, let's have the black people owe Africa. Uh, I, I mean, let's have the black people owe Israel. Okay? It was the, the Africans were taking the, the Jewish babies and killing them. But let's just want to bring the truth to you. Don't like the truth. I know. If I therefore come your become your enemy because I speak the truth. It was planted in a goodly soil by great waters. That it bring forth branches. That it might bear fruit. And it might be a goodly vine. So though Israel done wrong by the law and by God, it still produces fruit. There's good fruit and there's evil fruit. Well, why do the wicked prosper? Well, God will God will dwell. God will judge. In verse 9, say thou, God speaking back to speaking still to Ezekiel, but say now, thus saith the Lord God, shall it prosper under the second eagle? Reading and coming to the conclusion of the end of Jeremiah and Lamentations. No. Because didn't they also take Jeremiah and Baruch? Didn't they also run to Egypt? And God said, okay, Nebuchadnezzar, head on down to Egypt. <laughs> Shall he not pull up the roots thereof? And Zedekiah, he's gone. Isn't he the king that, that Nebuchadnezzar grabs, pokes, uh, and kills his two sons and pokes his eyeballs out? <laughs> and cut off the fruit thereof that it wither. <laughs> to everybody that went to Egypt, <laughs> that's it, you're done. Because God told Jeremiah those that will be spared will be those that go to Babylon. Ezra, Nehemiah. It shall wither in all the leaves of her spring. Even without great power, many people to pluck up by the roots thereof. Again, the law that prescribed Israel, don't go to Egypt. You're done there. Yea, behold, being planted, shall it prosper? Shall it not utterly wither when the east wind touches it? And shall it wither in furrows? That's Egypt, where it grew. It never prospers. To where God says, don't do. You cannot do what God says, don't do, and expect it to prosper, and he's going to go off preaching about the church again. And the church can't be, oh, we're going to get gold, silver, and precious stones by doing the things of the world in the worldly way. Because Jesus said the world hates him. Marvel not that the world hated, hates you, know that it hated me first. So, how can you prosper when Jesus says, here are a group of people that hate me, and the church uses what the people hate him? No. 
Egypt's the type of world. Yea, behold, being planted shall it prosper, shall it not utterly wither when the east wind touches it. There's no growth, there's no light. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Say now to the rebellious house, and that's God's people, Israel, Know ye not what these things mean? <laughs> that's the parables of the two eagles. Do you, you understand what I'm telling you? <laughs> I bet you didn't. Because you got men, you got men that stand up in the church age today preaching and they don't they don't want to know. Tell them. Alright, so here we go. Behold the king of Babylon, that's the first eagle. Is come to Jerusalem. God said, tell a riddle, tell a parable. In verse 12, God said, Okay, they don't get it. Tell them what it means. And yet they're going to have ears to hear, but they don't hear because Jesus spoke parables and explained the parables, and they didn't get it. The king of Babylon has come to Jerusalem and has taken the king thereof. That would be uh, Jehoiakim. And the princes thereof. And the eunuchs. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Ingo, and led them with him to Babylon. <laughs> He has taken of the king's seed and made a covenant with him, Zedekiah, and has taken an oath of him, and he has also taken the mighty of the land. So, you know, you can't fight Babylon and win. You're not going to win. Nebuchadnezzar ain't stupid. He's going to leave enough people to grow the crops, the, the, the grapes, and the figs, and do what he wants. But he ain't going to leave the military strength so they can build up and conquer me. In the time of King Saul, and even David, there were no weapons found in the land. That the kingdom may be base. Israel may be just, you know, ordinary. That it may not lift itself up against Babylon. So this is why Zedekiah would run to Egypt. We need help. Instead of running to God. That, But by keeping his covenant, it may stand. And Zedekiah is not going to get no help from God because they're not going to leave the queen of heaven. They're not going to burn the idols and the images of the temple in every street corner. That we read about in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And you're not going to get no national revival in, in America, in the world, when the church holds to Esther and Tammuz. Forget about your national revival. Now, I believe there could be a revival amongst an individual. I could, uh, a revival of, of a family, maybe of a group of church people. Not large. You're not going to get a revival when an idiot gets out of the pulpit and his Sunday school teacher gets up in the pulpit. Oh, the blood that's on the vein, on the garments of Jesus, the second coming, is his own blood. Define what the scriptures say. When the Bible says to read and study the word of God and to rightly divide, and when you don't, let's run to the world like Zedekiah did. That's what this whole chapter is about. But he rebelled against him. Zedekiah rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, sending his ambassadors to Egypt. That's the second eagle. You see how God's explaining it? There are, do you realize there are Christians, born again, Bible believing Christians, that say, Oh, I don't read that because I don't understand it. Why? Why doesn't Judah understand it? Because they ran to the wrong gods. Egypt has all kinds of gods. You realize when Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in their lives, when we get to Daniel, if we ever get to Daniel, when Lord Terry, they stood against the gods of Babylon and stood for God to Jehovah and what was right, and they got crucified. Well, they didn't die, but they got they got 
the blessings of God. And everybody hated Daniel. And Daniel saved their lives. That they might give him horses and much fear. Do you know what the law said about the king to go back into Egypt for the horses? You want to call up Solomon? <laughs> you want to call up Solomon like King Saul called up Samuel from the dead? <laughs> Hello, Solomon. <laughs> Hey, you don't do that. Because <laughs> then Solomon had, had him triggered with, with Pharaoh's daughter and pff, everything exploded. And much people. What's the much people, army? Shall he prosper? Shall he escape that doeth such a thing? It's a violation of the law. Shall the church prosper when they violate the scriptures? And break his covenant and be delivered? As I live, uh oh, there it is again. There's God saying, Thus saith the Lord God. There's a God making an oath by himself. Can you imagine? I can only imagine when God stands up and says, As I live, making I can just imagine all of heaven just hush. Is it serious? Surely. Run that back to Genesis chapter 2. Thou shalt surely die. And Satan said, Eve say, well, you know, took away surely. Eve, in the wonderful Eve standard version of her Bible, took the word surely out. In the place where the king dwelleth, that made him king, whose oath he despised, and whose covenant he break. This is King Nebuchadnezzar making Zedekiah the king. Even with him in the midst of Babylon, he shall die. Zedekiah goes to Babylon and dies. Neither shall Pharaoh with his mighty army. And God says, hey, he's got a mighty army. Pharaoh? Yes, Lord, when Israel calls you on the phone, yes, Lord, hang up. You have no dealings with Israel. His mighty army and great company make for him in the war by casting up mounts and building forts to cut off many persons. Seeing he is despised, he, he's despised the oath by breaking his covenant with Nebuchadnezzar. He told Nebuchadnezzar, made an oath, you know, and then he breaks his oath. Do you think God's now going to bless you because you lied? You know how many preachers I heard out of their pulpits, they lie? I know one famous preacher known throughout the United States. He gets up in his pulpit and he'll tell you, tell you a story. And then he'll tell you, well, you know, that, that really didn't happen. Then you're a liar. Sit down and shut up. Oh, but we can have white lies, polka dot lies, elephant lies, and all kinds of Santa Claus lies. God's not going to take too lightly the judgment for that. Lo, he has given his hand. Has done all these things, shall he not escape? Well, he's not going to escape. When you told Nebuchadnezzar you are going to be a man of your word and then you run to Egypt, that's not a man of his word. Sign on the dotted line. You can't do what you sign on the dotted line. You swear to take them to be your lawfully husband or wife, the death do you part, and then you get a divorce. Oh, God bless me. What? <laughs> no. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, as I live, there he goes again. Surely my oath that he has despised and my covenant that he has broken, even it will I recompense on his own head. I don't go back to Egypt. He went back to Egypt. Jeremiah told you, Go into the hand of Babylon. Do what Nebuchadnezzar do. And I will bless you. Oh, hello, Egypt. 
Help me. It's not what God said. It's not what God told Jeremiah to tell you. So now you've broken the covenant of the Lord God. You're in trouble. Now you've broken the oath with Nebuchadnezzar. Now you're in trouble. And you went to Egypt. You're three strikes. You're out. What's the three strikes of the church today? Esther, Tammuz, and then worshiping dead people. So well, how do we worship dead people? Let's honor our veterans. <laughs> And I had I know a church where they put pictures of, of dead veterans on Veterans Day. You're dead. And I asked them, did you witness to it? Well, I mean, kind of butter. No. God's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they're living. I know you don't like this preaching. I don't care. God does. I will spread my net upon him. <laughs> going to treat you like an animal. And he shall be taken in my snare. And Zedekiah is. He leaves out in the middle of the night and he's caught. I will bring him to Babylon and he goes. And will plead with him. There for his trespass that he has trespassed against me. That's Zedekiah. And all his fugitives with his bands shall fall by the sword. Oh, uh, death, sword of, of Babylon. Many Egyptians will die worthlessly, unmeritedly, because... Zedekiah and Israel should have never gone to Egypt, and Egypt should have said, No, sorry, hang up. Don't answer that call. Because don't tell me God didn't tell Pharaoh, Don't listen to Zedekiah. Don't you dare listen. There's many instances in the Bible where God's, Hey, you know, don't do that. And even my own life, God's like, eh, Don't do that. I've even had people in this that I'm about to do something wrong. And they're like, oh, no. But, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, God bless me. And scattered through all winds. And ye shall know that I, the Lord. That, that's kind of a, maybe a, yeesh. but that's still, you shall know that I, the Lord. Number 20. How do you know that he's you're fallen by the sword and you're in hell? <laughs> and I've said that how many times of 20? You know God is God. You know God is the Lord God. You are in hell, which means when you enter into the gates of hell, you are no longer an atheist. You know the King James Bible is the King James Bible if you had an NIV, whatever mess you had. And definitely when you enter into the gates of hell, though you may not have believed in hell or, or Hades or Shiloh, you now believe in hell. Too late. That's a rude awakening. Eve learned, surely die, the day that she got news, Abel is dead. Oh, that's what surely die means? Too late. People are going to have a rude awakening, saved or lost, to realize, you shall know I am the Lord, too late, that with all the nonsense you did in your life, God does not approve of it. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also take the highest branch of the cedar and will set it. 
Now, see again, now God's not finished with Israel, never finished with Israel. After all that, God said, hey, I'm going to rebuild them. And we'll crop off the top of his young twigs in a tender one. And we'll plant it upon a high mountain and eminent. Oh, that sounds like Jesus Christ. That sounds like a millennium. In the mountain of the height of Israel will I plant it. And shall bring forth boughs and bear fruit. Jesus says, I'm divine. And you can't bear fruit without him. And a goodly cedar. And under it shall dwell all fowls of every wing. <laughs> Those fowls are evil spirits, according to Mark chapter 4. In the shadow of his branches, therefore, thereof shall they dwell. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, <laughs> kind of a shall know. <laughs> Here's another one. Number 21. I have brought down the high tree. Man. And have exalted the low tree. Jesus was humbly and... and, and he wasn't proud. He wasn't prideful. He didn't make a big spectator of himself. Have dried up the green tree. And have made the dry tree to flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And it's interesting because I'm going to throw some here. Jesus says in Luke 23, 31, if they do these things in the green tree, talk about is death, what shall be done in a dry tree? 